Hello, my name is Leslie Atherton and this story is called Tree Lined Road. She'd been walking through the forest for three solid days and had mainly revelled in its mossy darkness. But once on the road, the canopied gloom lifted as sunlight gleamed onto the grass and the autumn leaf fall. She hadn't realised how oppressive the dark of the forest had been and her heart sang when the road emerged. Sasha began to walk towards it. Where will you take me, tree-lined road, she wondered, though she knew very well. The road would take her to a town nestled in a valley, but it was also the route to the hills and mountains beyond. In many ways, this was the road to her dreams. It was good to be walking on solid ground, and as her feet crunched on the rough gravel, Sasha realised that the grass-lined road, more of a country lane than an access route for traffic, cut gently through the trees without violation or obstruction. It seemed to be a natural feature, intentionally placed by a higher being to provide relief and escape from the swathes of tall deciduous trees. She followed the road's subtle contours with paces that crunched, interrupting the silence, a silence that was only otherwise shattered by a young man on a mountain bike who whooshed past her down the hill. Still, he didn't destroy her calm, how could he? The town of Barbizon lay at the road's end, and Sasha's fantastic holiday in the Fontainebleau forests would culminate there. It was where the walking trip would end, and the rest of her life would begin. Sasha was in north-central France to fulfil a long-held ambition, to visit the region where the Barbizon School of Painters, with Theodore Rousseau and Jean-Francois Millet at at their head, was situated. She wanted to walk the streets they had walked, visit their graves and stand outside the houses where they had lived. She wanted to consider the locations where the sheepfold moonlight might have been painted by Millet or where he might have made studies of groups of agricultural workers for the potato harvest. The Barbizon painters had chosen the forest well as it had been their priority to paint unadored and gritty depictions of nature. Such a backdrop, such inspiration. Sasha understood. She was beginning to enjoy the walk for the sake of the walk and the forest for the sake of the forest. It was the third day of her travels, and the trees had treated her very well indeed. She'd reluctantly camped alone secretly amongst them, but nevertheless had to admit that the prospect of settling in her specially chosen guest home, run by Madame Fournier, was almost as wonderful as her time outdoors. The opera Don Carlos by Verdi was set in this forest, she knew that too, The Scarlet Pimpernel characters had wandered through it. Vampire films had been set amongst its trees and they had provided inspiration for many artworks. Sasha could feel the woodland's pull, everything being so different from her home life. Manchester was okay and was full of good people, friends and family, but this was where she wanted to be. This was where her life as a living, breathing artist would begin, amongst the trees that had given birth to such natural brilliance more than a century before. Sasha had come home. Having selected a couple of large boulders on which to perch, she took off her rucksack and removed the sketch pad from its front pocket and started to draw in fine-tipped charcoal and coloured pencils. Under the birches afternoon, she called her sketch, unashamedly taking inspiration from Rousseau's Under the Birches Evening. After two hours, a freckled rain began to fall, but it was all right, She had finished her drawing and stowed it away within the pad, packed everything in her rucksack and continued along the road to Madame Fournier's. Oh yes, she was home. She was definitely home.